listen to this live testimony written in. It says supernatural promotion. I joined this commission July in July 2013. Before then, I have heavily I was heavily indebted a situation where I had to borrow to pay my debt. Every time I came to on Sundays, I was energized and the spirit of depression disappeared via the wall. Therefore, thereafter I was given a query and I had to previously received one, which meant that a sack letter was in view. I called my house and they said that there was nothing they could do. A colleague from the head office told me he was resigning to avoid a sack because of the same query. I came here anointed the letter and said I bury this query God of this commission because of me let there be reversal of this situation behold I go to the office the next day and the human resource manager sent me a mail of final warning secondly I was stagnated for seven years and I had a revelation that I should be sacked I came here and I prostrated on the altar and told God that the bishop said, For our shame, we shall get double. Behold, three months exactly in December, while they laid off staffs, I was promoted. I give God all the glory. It is written in by Olushegu. Let's put our hands together for the Lord. Please come up quickly, tell us your name, and straight to the point what the Lord has done. Exceeding grace. My name is David Ina. I've come to return all the glory to the God of this commission. I entered this church empty-handed after I sold all my property. Was looking for where to go to and I heard a voice that I should go to Goshen. I don't even know this is the place. When I was asking them, somebody had directed me. So when I came here, the second Sunday, I had to participate in water baptism. After the baptism, I went home that afternoon and I slept up. I saw myself inside a very deep well, going about inside the well. Then the bishop appeared in that place. And then he points his finger inside the way, and a white ladder appeared, and he asked me to come out. So when I begin to climb, he now carried me out. My brother, since that day, everything in my life changed. Things that I cannot do for 13 years, within a period of two months, I was able to do it. And secondly, on Friday, this same God gave me another job again with a bank. So I've come to return all the glory to him. In this liberation service, it is your turn for your own testimony. Hallelujah. Exceeding grace. My name is Julie Ariavier. I've come to return all the glory to God. I serve in the sanctuary unit. I want to appreciate God because God is faithful and God is here. We have been separated for 24 years and the Lord restored the marriage. I have, I have three daughters and God, even during the wilderness, the Lord saw us through. He kept me and these children safe and sound. And they are all graduates today. I want to appreciate God. And the marriage, the man has come back begging for forgiveness. I want to return all the glory to God. Someone that is here for liberation testimony this morning, put your hands together for the Lord. Now the next testimony says here, it says, 24 years mental illness and disorderliness healed. On 21st June last year, 2012, God ordered my steps to this holy deliverance place. On the 1st of July, 2012, I rededicated my life to God. In August, I participated in the Word of Faith Bible Institute program, BCC. And in September, I gave out my house to be used as a home self fellowship center. Since that day, I got, since the day I got born again, I began to experience new changes in my life. Meanwhile, about 24 years ago, precisely on 27th of December, 1989, I traveled from Lagos to my village. And in the recourse of the night, in the course of the night, I had a strange voice indicating that some people intended to destroy my life and my family. Since that day, the enemy put the spirit of mental illness and brain disorder upon me. So I have been on medication for a long time. Without it, I couldn't sleep. 
eat or enjoy life. But when I joined this church, I gave my life to the living word of God instead of depending on drugs again. I even attended the last Easter Youth Convention program and from there, I received my total healing. Praise the Lord. That is written in by DFOA. And the next one says, 25 years, 25 years plague of smoking and drinking broken. I have come to testify of the goodness of the Lord upon my life. For over 25 years, I've been smoking and drinking, but immediately I stepped into this Goshen, everything stopped. Someone that is his turn, let's lift up our hands and lift the name of the Lord who has done all this up on high. Father, we have returned to give you all the glory. Praise the Lord. In Luke chapter 17, verse 15. Those who thank God well will always do well in life. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back with a loud voice and glorified God. How did he return? With what? With a loud voice. Verse 16. He returned and worshipped at his feet, giving Jesus thanks. And verse 17, what happened? And Jesus considered this and said, Were there not ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? How many have seen one thing that the Lord has done in this commission? One thing. Not more than just one thing. Now, he returned and give thanks. Jesus said in verse 17 that it was expected. Verse 18. There are not found a return to give glory to God, save this stranger. Finally, verse 19. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way. That faith has made thee whole. Every time you return, he makes you whole. Is there any area of your life you want the Lord to perfect? Then rise upon your feet for 33 years as individuals. God has been faithful as a commission. God has been faithful. He is the caller. He is the doer. He is the healer. He is the beautifier. He is everything to us. I thought somebody is shouting a louder amen. He is the caller. He is the doer. He is the healer. He is our glory. He is the lifter of our head. He is the reason why we are not down. He is the reason why the enemy has not touched us. Lift up your voice from the depth of your heart as we package our thanksgiving seed. Lift up your voices from the depth of your heart. Give him thanks from the depth of your heart for everything the Lord has done. Give him thanks. Make a joyful noise that one leper made a great noise and glorified him lift up your voice make a noise father i thank you father i thank you let somebody keep shouting father i thank you father i thank you father i thank you lift up your two hands to heaven make a joyful noise in thanksgiving father i thank you i thank you i celebrate you i magnify you thank you and thank you and thank you in jesus precious name we have prayed can you see anything the lord has done for this commission what is it is it this mega sanctuary is it the power of focus upon god's servant is it the power of exemption Lift up your voice one more second and thank God for one thing the Lord you have seen the Lord has done for this commission. For his word of faith. For massive impact of his word. For church growth in diverse dimension. For the various arms of this commission. For Wobby. For the publishing arms, the books. For the educational arms. We thank you, Father. We are grateful. 
for you are faithful in jesus precious name i'd like you to lift up your two hands right now heavenly father lift up your thanksgiving seed also heavenly father as a church we say thank you first thessalonians 5 24 said faithful is he that call it who also do it you called your son bishop david oyedeko now you have done it more colorfully than we ever imagined. We say thank you. For every other prayer, I say, I'd like you to say a very loud thank you. Thank you. For keeping your servant focused 33 years, we say for the massive and amazing impact of the commission worldwide, we say for us here in Goshen, your impact your helps, your growth. We say, put your hands together and give him praise. We're going to cast our seed. We're going to dance. We're going to worship him as a choir minister. What will I say unto the Lord? What will I say unto the Lord? What will I say? Oh, 
Again, a loud hallelujah. If Jesus has done you well ever since you came to this commission, shout again a bigger hallelujah. Your life has encountered changes in different ways, in different magnitude. I want you alone like the one leper shout the biggest shout of thanksgiving and praise Lord, 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 Lord. thank you jesus thank you jesus now wave those beautiful hands and give quality thanks to the lord 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 from the depth of your heart, with a wave of your hand, with thanksgiving from your heart, with joy in your soul, with praise on your lips. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thanks, we give you thanks for all you have done. We are so blessed, our souls are fired. Oh Lord, we give you thanks. We give you thanks.
worship him in the spirit. Give him the glory due to him. Give him the glory due to him. Lift up your hands and worship him. Adore him. Lift him on high. Oh, wow. Verse 22, it is the, of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed. His compassion faileth not, they are new every morning. That is our testimony as a commission. For I am the Lord, I change it not, therefore ye sons of Jacob are not destroyed. Malachi chapter 3 verse 6. It is the celebration of the unchangeable God, the faithful God. If he is faithful, we must be grateful. If we want him to remain faithful, we must remain grateful. Our degree of gratitude is what determines his commitment to our well-being. That's why today we are thanking him as a commission 33 years of no stagnation 33 years of full impact 33 years of growth of progress in all fronts every year we must give him the glory for it and what more the changes in your life the transformation in your family you had another testimony this morning 24 years of separation in marriage restored by the power of God. Somebody has said, what I couldn't do in 13 years, God done in two months when I came to this place. I'm sure somebody somewhere this morning have similar testimonies. One more time, wave your hand with joy in your soul, with excitement, with a loud voice. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Are you sure God is hearing your voice? Hallelujah. Thank you and thank you and thank you, Lord. We are grateful. Oh, Lord. We are grateful, Lord. We are Completion. You are blessed with wholesomeness. You are blessed with perfection. And everyone rejoicing in the Lord this morning, wave your hand and say, Thank you, Jesus. Give God a big hand one more time. Hallelujah. And please take your seat. Shout hallelujah. 
Now, please get your prayer card for the month of May 2014. And as you do that, stretch your hand to your neighbor, congratulate him or her for the joy of the celebration of the liberation mandate. Thank you, Jesus. In case you don't have a copy of the prayer banquet card with you, please ask your, um, let the church officials quickly pass copies on to everyone. If you don't have a copy of this, it is your prayer um, card for the month of May. Remember, God said, ask and it shall be given to you. And ask until your joy is full. Ask, keep asking, and God will keep answering. Now, as you do that, get ready also your prayer reach project card for 2014. The prayer reach project card where you made a list of the souls you desire that God will touch through you and bring into the kingdom. It is your commitment to the kingdom that determines the commitment of the kingdom to you. And I'd like you right now to lift, to stand to your feet, everybody. If you have your copies with you, you have some desires for the month of May. God is ever ready, ever faithful. Stand to your feet, everybody, now. God is ever ready, ever faithful, ever willing. If you have not written anything, don't rush because we'll be praying over these cards in every service, receiving the priestly blessing. Now lift it up before the Lord and speak to him right now concerning your desire and especially concerning the souls you are praying for, for God to touch them. Don't mind who is next to you. You just pray your own. Hannah never minded who was listening. She prayed and God answered her. Don't mind who is listening to you. Jacob never minded who was listening. He prayed and God intervened. He said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. And God blessed him there. This morning, God is answering you. Answering you with speed. Answering you by fire. Answering you. Answering you. You are not returning ashamed. You are returning with answers. You are returning with blessing. You are returning with grace. Now raise your voice. He's hearing you now. He's answering you now. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, thank you and 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 thank you. Speak to him now. He is ever willing. He is ever ready. If you ask for bread, he will not give you stone. If you ask for egg, he will not give you a serpent. He is able to do far exceeding abundantly above all you could ever ask or think therefore ask ask and you shall receive seek and you shall find knock and the door shall be open to you ask him right now ask him right now thank you jesus now begin to wave those cards before the lord thanking him for answers to your prayer thanking him for the answers to your prayer wave those cards before the lord thank him thank him thank him he's faithful thank him he's faithful Blessed be God forevermore. In Jesus' precious name, we are praying. Lift up your hand. I decree that this month, God will answer you speedily. This month, God of this commission will answer you speedily. He will answer you with many infallible proofs. And everyone who believes, say the loudest, Hey! So shall it be. In Jesus' name. Please get seated with joy in your heart. And assure yourself, say with me, I know God has answered me already. Say it again, I know God has answered me already. Shout hallelujah. Shout again a loud hallelujah. As I welcome you this morning into this Thanksgiving service for our liberation celebration, the 33rd year anniversary celebration of this commission, I want to assure you that God of liberation will give you total freedom today in the precious name of Jesus. 
Before we receive God's word this morning, I'd like to commend and pray for everyone who was out there at the liberation raid on Thursday. The soul winning adventure that we engaged in at our district levels. It's my prayer that none of you will miss your rewards. Did I hear you say a loud amen? Soul winning is the greatest adventure of life because it is God's business and he pays people who are engaged according to his cap capacity. The pay you expect from any place of work is determined by the owner of the business. That's why pe people keep hunting for multinational organizations to work because the pay is according to the size of the company and here we are we have the almighty god can he employ you and pay you less than what people will pay you no he pays those who labor for him he pays those who serve him he's paying me every day every day from anywhere and from everywhere if you are seated here this morning it hasn't bothered you to win souls for jesus please wake up wake up soul winning is every believer's business it is every believer's business soul winning is every believer's business tell your neighbor for me it is every believer's business what is soul winning? Tell your neighbor, including you. Ask your neighbor, what about you? Last Thursday, I was out in two sessions of soul winning. One in the morning and in the evening. In the evening, I went to a football field where they are playing, requested the players and the coach to listen to me. And on sharing God's word with them, we had not less than 20 people who gave their life to Jesus. Amen. Don't clap for me. Go and do the same. Amen. <laughs> Go and do the same. I'm telling you how we have been enriched by God. I'm telling you why I'm so favored by God. I'm telling you why things are working for me. In the morning, one hour, quick, 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 quick. In the evening, quick, 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 praying, oh Lord, guide my feet to where the harvest is ready. Short message, hearts open. And started calling them the same evening. I spoke to not less than seven of them in the evening. This morning I have asked that my staff start calling them again. Because it is God's business. It is my business. I cater for God, so God caters for me. If you don't care for God, God cannot care for you. If a woman does not care for the husband, the husband will not care for her. In the same way, if you don't care for God, God does not owe you any obligation. It is what you do to him that he does to you. Therefore, I'd like you to make up your mind as you go this week go and be a soul winner begin with prayer lord put a new fire inside me lord make me zealous for your kingdom lord guide me to the souls you have prepared for me in all probability those who pray for souls will win the souls those who pray for souls will preach to the souls and will win the soul. Perhaps the reason why you are not preaching is because you are not praying. Start with prayer. That God will give you zeal. That God will give you boldness. That God will put the words in your mouth. That God will prepare the souls in your neighborhood. They are everywhere. You meet them in the bus. You meet them in your office. You meet them in your business place. You meet them in your neighborhood. They are everywhere. The whole neighborhood of yours is the mission field. Therefore, receive grace this week. I thought I had your amen. Receive grace this week to be a soul winner. Receive grace this week to be a soul winner. 
receive grace this week to be a soul winner lift up your hand and pray that prayer for yourself right now lord put a new fire in my soul make me a soul winner in the name of jesus in my neighborhood in my office in my business place are you praying that prayer at all pray a prayer with passion that god will make you a soul winner you will not be a seat woman in the church thank you lord in jesus precious name you're coming next week you will not come alone in the wonderful name of jesus christ as we win the souls let us also follow them up because when a mother delivers a baby the first thing she asks for is where is my baby as soon as she recovered where is my baby they said the baby is in the computer he said let me go there i want to go and see the baby let us be passionate about the souls we win let's go and see them let's go and feed them with the milk of the word of god let's follow after them let's carry them like you carry a baby and bring them to church take them to the self fellowship bring them to the church by whatever means no true mother goes on a journey without carrying the baby so if you have your new converts as your babies carry them along to the church don't come to church alone carry them to church with you put them in your vehicle if you have one put them on your motorcycle if you have one carry them in your hand if you are entering public transport or church provided bus carry them with your hand carry them along with you as you get committed to that you see god getting committed to you one more time lift up your hand lord grant me grace to win the souls and to establish the souls grant me grace to win the souls and to establish the soul speak to him right now 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 lord i will not watch the affairs of your kingdom go down in my time i am a soul winner i am anointed to win souls i will not fail i am committed i will not fail i am committed i will not fail thank you lord in jesus precious name we have given thanks give god another big hand for his help to you hallelujah quickly this morning we will take the word of the lord remember the prophetic focus for the month is faith is the mystery that confers mastery so my faith is the mystery that confers mastery what does that mean it means that faith is master faith is master of situations and circumstances when faith appears everything is under control so if you must be in control you must be in possession of faith if you must be in charge then you must be charged by faith faith is on top so if you must be on top you must be seated inside faith faith is ruler so if you must rule circumstances then you must be ruled by faith we are talking about ruling by faith winning by faith triumphing by faith taking charge by faith taking control by faith by the close of this month i see you on top that is what has made this ministry to be on top faith is prevalent faith always prevail faith does not go under faith always go on top one day jesus was traveling with his disciples and there was a big storm jesus was still sleeping because when faith is at work it gives rest faith makes you to sleep when others are anxious when others are apprehensive faith makes you calm and they woke up jesus they said master don't you care that we perish jesus said not when i'm here and he rose and rebuked the storm and there was a great calm and as soon as everything was calm the question jesus asked the disciples is where is your faith where is your faith when faith is lost 
destiny is in crisis. Jesus took faith. They dropped faith. Where is your faith? The projection of your faith is the promotion of your destiny. The projection of your faith is the promotion of your destiny. This ministry has seen promotion because this ministry has projected faith. The projection of your faith is the promotion of your destiny. When faith is in view, then destiny comes to limelight. When faith is kept in view, then destiny cannot go into obscurity. Our series of teaching for the month of May, I mean for Sundays this month, is unveiling the mystery of faith. Unveiling the mystery of faith. But quickly before we go into just the short teaching for this morning, I'd like to take the first portion of the teaching which focuses on thanksgiving and praise because thanksgiving and praise are major elements of faith as a matter of fact thanksgiving is an expression of faith thanksgiving is an expression of faith in luke chapter 17 one leper from verse 11 to verse 18 one leper to verse 19 rather one leper out of the 10 that were killed returned and gave thanks to jesus and as he gave thanks, Jesus said, Thy faith has made thee whole. What did the man do? He offered thanks. How did Jesus describe it? He described it as, as faith. So thanksgiving is expression of faith. Thanksgiving is expression of faith. If you are a thanksgiver, you are just simply telling God how much you believe in him. Thanksgiving is appreciating God in all circumstances. And Jesus described it as faith. In the same way, when you are praising God, you are expressing your faith. Because praise is counting God faithful. Judging God faithful. Praise is the celebration of God. Your circumstances notwithstanding. Praise is the celebration of God. Your circumstance is notwithstanding. So when you are praising God, you are judging God faithful. You are saying to God, I know you are always right. I know you can never miss it. I know there is no error in you. I know there is no mistake in you. What are the wonders of thanksgiving and praise? Number one. Thanksgiving preserves our lives and our blessings from pollution and corruption. When we pray, listen to this, God supplies. But when we praise, God preserves. When we pray, God supplies. But when we praise or thank, God preserves. It's one thing for you to have supplies. It's another thing for the supplies to be preserved. Preservation is about elongation of something. Preservation is about elongation of something. If you cut wood from the forest and it's not well preserved, it will begin to twat. If you harvest yam from the farm and there is no preservation, it will soon rot. If you harvest beans or any other product from the farm, and there is no preservation, it will soon be eaten up by rodents. In manufacturing world, 
especially of food items, they provide preservatives inside the tins in order to prolong the days of the product. God gives when you pray, but he keeps when you praise. Your prayer will make God give. It is your praise that will make God keep. So there are two levels. You have the supplies. Don't run away with it. Go back to God and thank him for the supplies. Then it will preserve. Malachi chapter 2, verses 1 to 3. God speaking to the priest. And we all are his priest. According to Revelation chapter 1, verse 6. He said, I give you this command that if you will not lay it to heart to give glory unto my name, verse 2, I will cause your blessing. Yea, as I'm talking now, I have caused them already because I've been waiting for you to give me thanks. You didn't come because ye do not lay it to heart. Verse 3, he said, Behold, I will corrupt your seed. I will corrupt your seed. So thanksgiving saves you from corruption and spread dung upon your faces. That is pollution. Even the dung of your solemn feast, and one shall take away, take you away with it. If you don't thank God, the supplies will soon be corrupted. So me, I thank God. Jeremiah chapter 13, verses 15 to 17. Jeremiah 13, 15 to 17. Hear ye and give here. Be not proud. Don't think it is your doing. Don't think it's your making. A proud man is always self-driven. For the Lord has spoken. Give glory to the Lord your God. Say with me, I give glory to the Lord my God. Otherwise, he will cause darkness. And before your, he will cause your feet to stumble upon the dark mountain. You will be doing like a foolish man. You that did it well before, you will not be doing it foolishly. Everybody will be abusing you until they sack you. He will make you to stumble upon the mountains. And while you look for light, he turns it into the shadow of death and make it gross darkness. Inspiration now turns into confusion. Verse 17, he said, But if you will not hear, my soul shall weep in secret places for your pride, and mine eyes shall weep sore and run down with tears because the lost flock is carried away captive. You know what that means? When you don't give God thanks, you will end in captivity. Freedom is turned to captivity without thanksgiving. Freedom is turned into captivity without thanksgiving. When you pray, God gives you freedom. When you thank him, then he will not allow you to go back to captivity. Number two, wonder of thanksgiving and praise. Say with me, perfection. Say it again, perfection. Earlier, Reference was made at the moment of thanksgiving to Luke chapter 17, verses 11 to 19. One man returned. Verse 17, he went and gave thanks. And Jesus said, hey, I'm expecting 10. Where are the nine? Only one came, the Samaritan, the one who is not familiar with it. The one who saw and gave thanks. And in verse 19, he said, go, your faith has made you whole. Wholesomeness, wholesomeness. By prayer. We can assess a fraction, but by thanksgiving, we secure the whole. In mathematics, they taught us about fraction and whole, someness. You get fraction, one tenth, or you get the whole. Prayer will give you fraction, but thanksgiving will give you whole. Thanksgiving will make you complete. Thanksgiving will make you perfect. Psalm 138 Verses 1 and 8. The psalmist began from verse 1. I will praise thee with my whole heart. Before the gods will I sing praise unto thee. And as I'm doing that, verse 8. The Lord shall perfect that which concerns me. The Lord will perfect that which concerns me. So every time you offer thanks and praise, you can tell what the end will be. Anything praise begins. Perfection completes. Anything praise begins. Perfection is the end of it. Perfection is the end of thanksgivers. Perfection is the end of thanksgivers. Lift up your hand again and say, Father, I thank you. 
And number three, wonder of thanksgiving is supernatural triumph. Supernatural triumph. When we give thanks to God, God goes up. According to Psalm 47 verse 5, God goes up with our shout. God is going up with a shout. And when God goes up, he gives us the triumph. You remember the story in Joshua chapter 6 verse 20? They were around the walls of Jericho and God told them, shout. And as they shouted in praise, as they shouted with, and blew the trumpet, it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet, the people shouted with a great shout and the wall of Jericho fell flat. When we thank God, when we praise God, mountains are leveled. Oppositions are destroyed. The mountains came down. By faith, the walls of Jericho came down. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 30. So as we are thanking him, we are moving him into action. As we praise him, we are moving him into action. We are moving him into action by faith, which was expressed in thanksgiving and praise. The walls of Jericho fell down after they were compassed about seven days. Shout hallelujah. I say shout hallelujah. So our thanksgiving and praise are spiritual explosives. When you dance around your situation, you are setting up spiritual explosives to bring down the walls, to bring down the barriers. As you go this week, all barriers will crumble before you. Now, quickly, let us run into the subject of faith now. As we open up, let's be reminded that faith is the answer to all impossible challenges of life. Faith is the answer to all impossible challenges of life. That is, faith is the solution to all problems of life. When faith arrives, problems dissolve. When faith arrives, problems dissolve. How do I know that? First John chapter 5, verse 4. Whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory. Say with me, the victory. I want to hear you very well. Say it again. This is the victory. Faith's second name is victory. This is the victory. When faith appears, victory appears. This is the victory. It is not a victory. It is the victory that overcomes <laughs> the world, even our faith. Faith is so vital that the first name and identity of the church is faith. The first name given to the church, the first identity of the church is faith. Acts chapter 6, verse 7. And the word of God increased. And the number of disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly. And a great company of the priests were obedient to the faith. The faith. Faith was the number one identity of the church. Faith. So faith brings solution. Faith dissolves problems. Also, faith is the most potent force in the whole universe. It is the most potent force in the universe. How? It is because it brings man to equality with God. Faith makes you equal with God. Faith brings you to the same platform with God. Faith makes you operate as God. Faith makes a God out of the believer. You don't operate like God, you operate as God when faith is inside you. How? 
Mark 10, 27. For with God, all things are possible. With God, all things are possible. And then chapter 9, verse 23. To him that believes, all things are possible. If you can believe, all things are possible to you. All things that are possible with God are possible to you if you believe. I'd like to repeat that again. All things that are possible with God are possible to you if you believe. So faith is the link between God and you. Faith is the bridge. When you start believing, God starts coming. When you start believing, God starts coming. God steps in anywhere he sees faith. God steps in anywhere he sees faith. He steps in anywhere he sees faith. God steps in anywhere he sees faith. Show him your faith and he will show you his face. Show him your faith and he will show you his face. Show God your faith and God will show you his face, his appearance. Anywhere there is faith, God steps in. Anywhere there is faith, God steps in. Shout hallelujah. Why do we say that faith is the most potent force in the whole universe? Number two, it upturns mountains. Faith of tons mountains mark chapter 11 verse 23 verily i say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain be thou removed be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart but shall believe shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass he shall have whatsoever he says so faith takes control of the mountains from the root to get it out so if you have any mountain situation in your life, just take faith. Take faith. Number three reason why we say faith is the most potent force in the whole universe is that it enables man to do greater works. It enables man to do greater works. John 14, 12, Jesus said, He that believes on me, the works I do, he shall do. The works I do, the works I do, shall he do also. Faith makes you equal with God and even greater works than these shall he do greater shall he do greater so faith enables you to do greater works number four reason why we say faith is most potent force in the whole universe is that it engenders unhindered answers to prayer faith engenders unhindered answers to prayer that is when faith is loaded into prayer answers cannot be hindered when faith is loaded into prayer, answers cannot be hindered. Matthew 21, 22. Matthew 21, 22. I say unto you, what things, whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, and all things, call it anything, whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing ye shall receive. So faith is the link between asking and receiving asking and receiving faith is a link shout hallelujah shout a loud hallelujah shout again a loud hallelujah as we begin to round up what is faith now quickly i show to you in two ways what is faith faith is not a religious theory but a mystery of the kingdom faith is mystery what is mystery mystery simply means what cannot be explained and the reason why faith is mystery is because life itself is mystery life itself is mystery so the only way to live this life is by engaging another mystery a superior mystery faith is a superior mystery to life mysteries somebody went to sleep very healthy at night 
Suddenly in the morning, they found his dead body. What happened to him? Say with me, mystery. Mystery. That's why you need a superior mystery to subdue negative mysteries of life. First Timothy chapter 3 verse 9 shows to us that faith is mystery. Holding the mystery of the faith. So you have to hold it. You have to take it in your hand. In a pure conscience. What are we saying? Faith carries the capacity to dissolve every mysterious circumstance of life. Faith has the capacity to destroy every mysterious circumstance of life. Number two, what is faith? Faith is not a dormant force. It is a dominant force. Faith is a dominant force. Faith does not compete. Faith does not negotiate. Faith dominates. Faith equals dominion. Faith is not a negotiator. Faith is a denominator. Anywhere faith appears, it takes control. It takes full charge. From today, you are taking full charge. I want to hear your loud amen. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 16. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 16. Faith is a dominant force. It's a takeable force. Above all, taken. Taken. You can take it because it is tangible. Taking the shield of faith, where which you shall be able to quench. You shall be able to dominate all the fiery darts of the wicked. You can dominate life. You can dominate among witches and wizards. You can dominate circumstances. Say with me, I am a dominion man. I am a dominant man. <laughs> Hallelujah. Faith will make you smile the way I'm smiling. Taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to dominate, to quench, to be in charge, to be in control, to stop the enemy. Shadrach, Mr. and Abednego were in the fire. They dominated the fire. Daniel was in lions, then he dominated, he dominated the lions. He dominated the lions. Faith will make you eat your eater. Faith will make you to destroy your destroyers. Faith will make you capture your captors. Faith will make you kill your killers. Shout hallelujah. You know what Jesus told us? Mark 16, 17. He said, these signs shall follow them that believe. Them that believe. And among the signs, he said, they shall cast out devils. That means they will dominate devils. They will dominate devils. Mark 1, 27. Mark 1, 27. And they were all amazed. In so much that they were questioned, they questioned among themselves saying, what thing is this? What new doctrine is this? You know, faith, faith generates new doctrines. For with authority commanded he, even the unclean spirit. Faith was at work. He commanded. Faith makes you a commander. And they do obey him. Faith always commands obedience. Faith subjects things around you. Faith does not beg, nor bow, nor blend. Faith does not beg. Faith does not bow. Faith does not bend. Faith is always standing. He said, by faith we stand. By faith we stand. I think that's in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. By faith we stand. By faith we stand. They are falling, but we are standing. By faith we stand. Read from 2 Kings chapter 1, 
verses 9 to 15. There's an account of how some army, some soldiers were sent to go and arrest Elijah. And Elijah declared, If I be a man of God, let fire come and consume them. And fire came down, consumed 50 of them. The first set. Second set, fire came down, consumed them. The third set, when they were coming, the captain began to beg. Elijah, please don't destroy me like others. Faith is a dominant force. Are you going through any circumstance of life where you are seated this morning? Show your faith and God will show his face. Show your faith and God will show his face. Show your face. And one of the ways to show your faith is by declaring, declaring God's word. Stop watching your situation. Start challenging your situation. Challenge your situation. Like Goliath. The Goliath challenged, I mean David challenged Goliath. David challenged Goliath to bring him down. I mean, should a little boy be talking to a, a giant? No. In the natural, no. There are things that look bigger than you right now. It is your faith that will bring them down. They are as mountain. It is your faith that will bring them down. And how does that faith operate? It operates by your declaration. It operates by your declaration. You can bring the mountain down. You can bring Goliath down. You can bring the walls of Jericho down. You can bring that situation down. This morning you are bringing them down. That is what has made this ministry to dominate till today. Faith at work. Faith at work. Speaking faith. Declaring faith. Clearing all the enemies and the opposition. This morning, something good is happening to you. Total liberation from all oppressions of the devil tormenting your life. You are coming out of it now in the name of Jesus. Now, quickly before we rise to pray. There are individuals here this morning who are seated. You know from the depth of your heart that you have not given your life to Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You know where you are seated now that somehow things are not right between God and you. You know it. You don't have to be told. You know you are far away from God. You know your heart is not with God. This morning you want to say to Jesus, have mercy on me. I want to come to you. Have mercy on me, oh God. Forgive my sin. There is no one too bad for him. Don't let Satan deceive you. He may tell you you are too bad. No, God says that is the one I'm looking for. He's looking for the one that is too bad. And you are that one. Right now, wherever you are this morning, want to give your life to Jesus, stand to your feet. I want to pray for you. God bless you. Anywhere you are in this service this morning, on the gallery, on the floor, in any of your hands, stand to your feet, stand to your feet, stand to your feet right now, quickly. God is talking to someone right now. You are the one. You are the one. The Holy Ghost is saying you are the one. He's pointing you out not to condemn you, but to have mercy on you. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Some other persons are here this morning. You are once born again, but you have gone out of the faith. You want to be restored back to the faith. You want to be restored back to the faith. Quickly, wherever you are, stand to your feet as well. You know that you are with God before, but you left him. You ran away from him. Now you are coming back home. Now, all of you who have stood up, take your Bibles with you, and I'd like you to come find a way at the altar here right now. Whatever you came to church with, come to the altar here. If you come with any child, don't leave the child behind. Come together to the altar here right now. Please, quickly do that. God bless you. Whether you are giving your life to Jesus afresh, or you are getting restored back to the faith, come quickly. Come quickly. Come quickly. Thank you, Jesus. Please note... The books of the month are as indicated in the bulletin and on the screen as they will show them to you. Please make sure you get these books. They will help you. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The Lord bless you mightily. We also have CDs that will also help your faith out there. And please note that the miracles are real for the week is also out engaging the given power. That is talking about the mystery of tithing. Please get copies and be blessed as you do so in Jesus' precious name. You'll be glad to know that next Sunday, by the grace of God, we'll be having our covenant day of healing. The covenant day of healing. Hallelujah. I can't wait for that day to come. There will be diverse healings. There will be diverse manifestations. There will be diverse testimonies. I want you to get ready. Get ready. Tell anyone you know that is sick of any kind of infirmity. Cancer, HIV, high blood pressure, hypertension, stroke, blindness deafness anyone that you know is sick or afflicted 
tell them that Jesus is opening a special clinic next Sunday to bring healing to all. Tell them. Tell them boldly. And you will see God in action next Sunday. You will see God in special action next Sunday. You will see God in special action next Sunday. The way we have never seen him before. So please get ready. Tell everybody around. There is no hand bill this morning. Only mouth bill. You use your mouth to do the bill. Amen. Please get ready. And if there is anyone seated having any such issues, God is saying, I am more than enough. Shout a loud hallelujah. Shout a loud hallelujah. Shout again a loud hallelujah. The midweek service will be very preparatory to what we'll do on Sunday. I'd like you to get ready. On Wednesday, we'll be here waging war against family sicknesses, family diseases, hereditary sickness and disease. You will be standing in the gap for yourself and for your family. On Wednesday, at the midweek service, we'll be waiting on the Lord in the fast. Get said, God will be working wonders as we gather together. And of course, you know, on Saturday, we'll be having another outreach again. Are you tired of winning souls for Jesus? Well, remember, only those who care for God will enjoy the care of, of God. Only those who care for God will enjoy care from God. Let us show care to the kingdom for us to enjoy care from the kingdom. Shout hallelujah. I can see many more people are standing up to give their life to Jesus. If you are still seated, you'll know you are not born again. Hey, look at that. Many people have left you behind. You are the only one still seated. You better jump up quickly and run down here now as we pray. Run down here quickly as we pray. The Holy Ghost is still talking to someone there to stand up. Run down here if you are the one. Run down here now as we pray. Now, all of you in front here, please lift up your right hand. All of you in front here, lift up your right hand and bow your heads as you pray this prayer with me. Say with me, Lord Jesus. Say it out loud, Lord Jesus. I submit my life to you today to receive salvation, forgiveness of my sins. From today, I believe in my heart that Jesus died for me. On the third day, he rose again for my justification. Now that I believe, I am saved. I am justified. I am forgiven. I am cleansed. I'm a child of God. Thank you for saving me in Jesus' precious name. Now I decree that the grace of God that has saved you will keep you in Jesus' precious name. Amen. God bless you. Please open your eyes and take a turn to your right or to your left. Follow after these church officials. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Don't forget the Winner Satellite Fellowship. Every Saturday, 5 p.m. is the time. Go fellowship with your brethren and be blessed in Jesus' precious name. How many of you want to experience total liberation? Amen. Now stand to your feet. The hour has come. That's what God spoke to his servant, Bishop Oedipo, 33 years ago. To liberate the world. To liberate the world from all oppression. From all oppression of the devil. By the word of faith. By the teaching of the word of faith. You have heard the word of faith this morning. Your liberation is sure. I say your liberation is sure. Your liberation is sure. Now, if you came in here for the first time on Sunday into this service this morning, this is your first Sunday service at Living Faith Church, Goshen here. I'd like you to take your Bible and whatever you came to church and come to the altar here to pray your own prayer. Come quickly and take fire from the altar. Let every, every devil tormenting you be brought to the altar so that they can be consumed with the fire of the Holy Ghost. Now, as we pray, I'd like you to pray, making utterance. You speak with the authority of Jesus. Jesus has set me free. For whosoever the Son has set free is free indeed. Satan, you have no authority over me. Circumstance, you have no authority over me. I am on top. I cannot be under. I cannot be sick. I cannot be afflicted. I cannot be poor. Now, raise your voice. You are going to see a miracle this week. You are going to see a miracle beginning from now. Everyone, don't mind who is next to you. The next two minutes, I'd like you to speak loud. Speak strong. Speak loud. Speak strong. Speak out. Speak loud. Speak strong. Faith will always speak.
Don't keep quiet. Somebody speak right now. Speak right now. Challenge your opposition. Don't speak like a gentleman. David did not speak like a gentleman. Otherwise, Goliath will have killed him. Speak boldly. Speak loudly. Speak courageously. Speak authoritatively. Raise your voice. Challenge that sickness. Challenge that failure. Challenge that mountain. Challenge that devil. 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 Challenge that situation. Declare your wholesomeness. Declare your freedom. Declare your wholesomeness. Declare your freedom. Declare your wholesomeness. Open wide your mouth. Speak out. That sickness must bow. That oppression must stop. That delay must stop. Raise your voice. Beginning from this week. Right now. This week. I am going to encounter total liberation. Total liberation. Total liberation. I am not here for fun. I am here for my liberation. I'm here for my liberation. I'm here for my liberation. Right now. I take it. I receive it. I take it. I receive it. Mountain must bow. Opposition must bow. Satan must crumble. Mountains must give way. Speak out. Possess your possession. Take what belongs to you right now. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' precious name, we are prayed. In Jesus' precious name, we are prayed. It is done. Now stretch forth your hands here. I speak to you now with the authority of Jesus. Every torment of your life be over right now. By the preaching of the word of faith you have received this morning, I decree every mountain before you be uprooted. Every barrier before you be removed. Every lion set to consume you be consumed. Every fire set to consume you, be quiet right now. As you go from here this morning, I decree your total liberation. This week, there is absolute freedom for you. Wherever you have been molested, I see you riding on the waves of life. I declare that this week, shall be your week of testimony sir so shall it be and everyone in the house who believe raise your voice and shout the loudest amen if you believe you have received your answer shout the loudest amen for every first time worshiper standing at the altar here i decree god's mighty blessing upon you in the name of jesus you will return here when next you come to share your own testimony in jesus precious name we love you we welcome you we encourage you to be here with us in our future services which is from wednesday sunday and continuously you'll be blessed in jesus name please allow our church officials to attend to you briefly as you go from here this morning you take it on either this way or this other way god bless you and god bless you shout hallelujah shout a loud hallelujah your house shall be kept your journey shall be kept your career and business shall be kept nothing shall hurt you this week all who seek to hurt you will be destroyed in the name of jesus all who seek to hurt nigeria will be destroyed in the name of jesus we pray for peace and strength for our president and for all in authority they will not be confused they will know the right steps to take in the precious name of jesus now go in peace the god of your fathers go with you in the name of jesus 
whatever cannot hurt God's servant Bishop Oedepo will never be able to hurt you again. It is well with you. Now the goodness of the Lord and fellowship, let's go. Surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the presence of the Lord forever. Amen. Exceeding grace, strange acts, that's your portion. Greet your neighbors as you go. Happy anniversary.